Hey guys, so I decided to do this video because um, I think that a lot of people, um, well not a lot, but some people may have um, taken my stories about Jamaica um, to be offensive or um, thought that I was, you know, speaking down on a culture, which I really wasn't. It was really an individual and related to a family. But I did, just based on that, want to share some of my experiences just living in Jamaica, um, dealing with family um, opinions about me moving to Jamaica, and just how it was for me out there. So I lived in Jamaica for almost like a year. I, um, I moved to Negril, and I lived there with my then fiance. Um, and we lived in an apartment in Negril. It was like I don't know, like two blocks from the beach. It was amazing. Like, first of all, I'm gonna start this by saying that my experience in Jamaica was amazing. That part of my experience being married to one, I would never, you know, replace. It was a very pleasant experience. It was very positive. Um, I had a lot of love around me, a lot of community around me. So it was, you know, really surprising that a lot of the things changed um especially when we moved to america but anyway so yeah we lived in the grills two blocks from the beach and um it was in a house um that was like a fourplex and we paid like 200 dollars a month for rent i paid it of course <laughs> let's just notate that and say that american women paid it not and i'm not proud about that shit either so i'm just saying this to say if a Jamaican man invites you to live in Jamaica or anywhere near him, make sure that he's footing the bill. Okay. Um, so yeah, we lived um, we lived there and the community was, was amazing. The grill is like um, a small town, um, a small touristy kind of town, um, but it's, you know, wrapped in community. And I would walk to the store all the time by myself. I was very safe, contrary to what a lot of people say about Jamaica. You know, in this story, in this story, I will tell you a little bit about like what my family was saying, like phone calls I would get, like the stupid shit I would like fucking hear. Um, one of the things, um, one time I was like chilling, having a fucking great day. Probably just came from the beach eating fucking coconut meat and shit. I don't know. Probably eating fucking. I don't know, shrimp, I don't know, but you know, like my days were typically really laid back uh, when I lived in the grill, um, my ex-husband was working, so during the day, um, he would go to work, sometimes I would go to his job and like be over there, um, and sometimes I would just stay where I was and wash clothes or just like explore the community and just walk around, go get some food for like $2.50, like a whole, you know, brown stew plate with with a rice and everything else. Anyway, um, a story about one of my uh, relatives calling me. So my sister, one of my older sisters called me just kind of out the blue um, and was like, oh, like what's going on with you? And I was like, what are you talking about? Like, what's wrong with you? Like something going on in America? Like what's up bitch <laughs> and she's like no you know i heard you're in jamaica in some kind of shanty town and you know being held up against your will i was like what the fuck bitch i'm just eating some fucking mangoes in my apartment what are you talking about like in a minute i'm about to go fucking to the bar like what the fuck are you talking about but she had this story in her mind about i don't know you know what happened was that my relatives instead of coming to me and saying, you know, hey, you know, how are you doing out there? What's going on? I heard you're engaged. I heard you're getting married. Like, what are you thinking? Like, what are you, what's going on? Um, instead of that, they created these stories about me living in Jamaica, being held against my will, you know, being with some gangster ass fucking Rasta or some stupid shit. Um, and that wasn't the case at all. I was like living my fucking best life. Um, but, you know, my sister called me with this energy that like completely threw me off and was just like not supportive at all and not really helpful at all. Um, and really, that was a lot of the energy that I was getting when I was there. It was a lot of, well, what are you doing there? Like, what's going on? And it wasn't so much people were asking me. It was just like I would hear it through the grapevine. Like I would hear a lot of people that, you know, had a lot of comments about me um, prior to me moving to Jamaica, about me even like dealing with the Jamaican. Um, and one of those people were, um, 
was my cousin, a male cousin that I have. And he was very vocal, but not directly to me. He was vocal to people around me and on social media and stuff like that. Very childish, like. And the thing about that is, like, you know, people can say, oh, yeah, I told you so. I told her so. And they're probably saying this shit right now. I don't give a fuck. If they are, I don't care. Um, because the thing is, if you are a family member, if you're a friend, or if you genuinely have um, any emotions towards an action that a family member or somebody that you love is about to take, you should consult them. You should come to them directly, not on social media, not in a message, not in a text message. Be like, hey, Ish, come over. Let me talk to you. You know, let me just talk to you. Let me have, let's have tea. Like nobody in my family did that. Not one person did that. Um, not even my father. No, no, nobody did that shit. Nobody really sat down and talked to me about, you know, anything that I was going through, except for an aunt that was not related to me, blood related to me. I call her my aunt, but it's through a formal marriage of my father's. Um, she was the one that actually came and spoke real words to me prior to me moving to Jamaica. So what my cousin was doing, he's been married to like five Africans for green cards. So, you know, he thinks he's a fucking immigrant um fucking sponsor um i don't know champion or some shit like he knows the whole process nigga won't you just work for immigration then bitch like why <laughs> like <laughs> i'm saying all this because like you know people like this they don't say stuff to you directly they go around you and you know create these stories and create this drama that really disrupts your life instead of as family as friends coming to you and being like look check this out Maybe you need to make these moves instead of this move. Anyway, the aunt that came to me to talk to me, she just sat me down and was like, Aisha, now you're very accomplished. You've done a lot in your life, um, you know, um, and you're going to this foreign country and you're going to be, you know, engaged to somebody that you don't really know that well. Are you really, have you really thought this through? You know, what are your thoughts around it? Like she really sat down and talked to me about it and I rationalized it, you know what I'm saying? Cause, and at the point I wouldn't, I wouldn't do it over. You know, I wouldn't say, you know, based on the experiences that I had that I um, regret not, not going a different direction because, you know, out of it, I, got, I gained two beautiful children and a really beautiful experience that I'm able to share with other people so that they cannot, they, are, they don't have to, you know, go through or experience the same things that I have. But, um, you know, um, she was very wise and she sat down with me and talked to me about it. Um, but there were a lot of people, a lot of people that talked about me, a lot of people who were close to me that talked to me, talked about me. Um, when I was in Jamaica, um, you know, I was reaching out to people that were very close to me, some cousins that were female cousins that were extremely close to me. They ignored me, like, you know, avoided me on um, social media, avoided me in text messages, avoided me. Like, it was very hurtful. Um, you know, people who I was originally really close to just kind of like were acting super funny. And I, you know, I didn't even really get it. But, um, you know, it could have been for various reasons. They probably one didn't agree with what I was doing, but if they didn't, they weren't vocal about it. And that's what I encourage people to do is be more vocal. If you see your sister or your brother or anybody engaging into something that you think may not be the right idea, why don't you just talk to them about it? Not be like, I told you fucking so or some fucking stupid shit. Like, that's dumb. Like People are going to go through their experiences and they're going to learn through their experiences. So, so funny story. Don't fuck with um, immigration and customs and all that shit. Funny story, my dog was deported. I didn't know that dogs are illegal in Jamaica. At least the dogs that come from America and Canada, they have to be quarantined and they will send that ass back. I didn't know that my dog was illegal to come to Jamaica. And when I found out about it, I had I snuck him into the country. <laughs> and long story short, my dog was deported. But it was like after this whole shabaco, which is like the funniest, crazy story that involved customs, immigration, like the head of architect or agricultural services. My dog had to be flown out from Jamaica, like literally was deported. Like I, they were telling me I had to pay the government like thousands of dollars, like $5,000 or like it was like some extortion shit that was going on. You know, the airplane carrier, JetBlue, they had to play it, pay a fine. Like, this shit got deep. 
<laughs> it was it's a really interesting story like maybe one day i'll tell it but the shit is funny and crazy as fuck like literally almost got away with it the story belongs on that fucking show almost got away with it but you know it all in, in the end it worked out um you know a lot of people ask me what happened with my um my dog like where he is now um and he's with my uncle when my um, dog was supported my father took him and gave him to my uncle and uh, when I came back from Jamaica to get him, it was like this whole kind of weird ass fucking standoff. Like, because my uncle was like, oh, well, he, you know, wasn't in a good environment. And he, you know, you're not, you know, really stable right now and all this other stuff. I'm just like, what are you talking about? And the thing is, you know, when you're not around and family is talking about you, you just never know what they're saying, especially in a foreign country that they've never been to and that they're you know, you're around people that they've never been around. So they create these stories in their minds and they spread them. And then they just, you know, they take them as truth. Um, but, you know, I guess my uncle thought he was doing me a favor, but it really actually hurt me, like really, really bad. Because, um, you know, um, it, it created this tension between me and you know, my uncle, my cousins, because they fell in love with my dog as everybody else did. Everybody loved my dog. But at the end of the day, that was still my dog. So when, you know, I went to go get him back, it was just this whole like standoff. But it was really weird because my uncle is a really, um, big dog person and, you know, he would probably get mad if he saw this, but I don't care because this is my truth. You know what I'm saying? Like, um... You know, if he feels a way about it, then that's just how he feels. But if anybody ever took a dog from him and, you know, allowed somebody to create a story of, about him that wasn't true to justify why they should take this dog away from, from them, from him, especially how big of a dog lover, like he picked up dogs off of a freeway and took them home and cared for them. That's how much my uncle loves dogs. But, you know, I guess he fell in love with my dog and he gave it to his wife. And now that's his wife's dog. Um, I did, you know, get my dog back. Um, but it, when I got my dog back, it created such a huge tension between us. I was just like, I just created the story and was like, here, you know what I'm saying? Like, I don't even want to fight. You know what I'm saying? At that point, I was just more about family and stuff like that and trying to maintain relationships. But that dog was my family. And if I really would have thought through it, and, and, and another reason so, why, I was just like, all right, well, I'm just going to give up this fight and, you know, give my dog back to, you know, um, my relatives, which is fine. You know, I appreciate them and I thank them for, you know, holding on, keeping my dog and loving my dog, um, you know, as it was his. But, you know, just thinking about the situation, if you take yourself out of it, the shit was fucking weird. Like, I would just never do, I would just never claim somebody else's stuff as, as my own, not even knowing the story behind it, not even knowing the fight that I had to, um, to put up to for the Jamaican nationals not to kill my dog. They were actually going to kill my dog. Um, so I had to, you know, really fight for my dog and then realizing, you know, when I come finally come back from Jamaica and, you know, I, I want to see my dog that I've had for six years. Um, and, you know, my uncle's like, oh no, this is our dog now. And, you know, really having that tension around, you know, seeing my dog during holiday events and family functions and, you know what I'm saying? That shit is fucking weird. So I don't want to harp on that. It's just like, you know, I just, you know, touch on little stories about um, things that I experienced, you know, when I was dealing with um, this whole Jamaica affair, you know, my family being fucking weird, you know, but at, on the other end, the Jamaican experience was really, was really great. You know, a lot of the abuse and stuff didn't start until later on and especially when my ex came to America, that's when it really started. And it didn't, we went back to Jamaica a few times. It wasn't like, okay, well, you know, it's just kind of him and America. Mm -mm. It was just him. So when I was in the grill, it was like the best experience of my life because, um, you know, I could just go down, walk down to the market or walk down to, you know, the center square. I don't even know what they called it, where they sold pro fresh produce, jerk chicken and everything. And everybody was really nice. I would always you know, um, be greeted by people. Uh, when I would walk down the streets, especially when I moved to my husband, my ex-husband's neighborhood um, in the mountains of Trelawney, um, they would be like, good morning, Empress. I'd be like, good morning. <laughs> you clearly know me. <laughs> you know, I would have the fucking best experience. Like, 
I cannot knock any experience that I've had in Jamaica. I mean, the from the rivers, um, you know, you would see people bathing in the rivers because that's how clean they are. Um, from the food, the chicken is fresh. Um, it's not like how we buy it. It's been sitting in, I don't know what freezer for, I don't know how long, but the chicken is like in the backyard so you can see like they're about to kill it so that you can eat it. Or the lobster, you know, they they just fished it today. You know what I'm saying? Like that was a lot of the experience um, that I had. It was very pleasant. Um, and so, yeah, one of the stories that my actual aunt <laughs> made up about me <laughs> So when, um, before I left and went to Jamaica, I left my clothes and my other belongings at the aunt that I was referring to that's not related to me. I left it in her garage, including a fur coat that my grandfather had given me. That was my grandmother who had passed away. So um, my aunt, <laughs> my blood aunt, spread a story to, I don't know, whoever would listen to her, that I was in Jamaica and I sold my grandmother's fur coat to somebody in Jamaica, to some street nigga in Jamaica. Who the fuck in Jamaica is wearing fucking fur, nigga? It's like 90 something degrees all the time. It's so fucking hot. They don't even know what the fucking temperature is because today is just fucking hot. Like that's what they say on the fucking radio. What's the weather today? Hot, nigga. <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying? Like, who the fuck is rocking a fur in Jamaica? And who the fuck is putting that in a suitcase? First of all, that big ass fucking fur would have took up one suitcase. You know what I'm saying? So another thing that I wanted to kind of touch on was um, really the people. Um, because a lot of what's told about Jamaican culture is they're very um, aggressive people. Um, and they're... Um, they're rude in nature and all this stuff, you know, and they're very dangerous. And of course there are, you know, a lot of dangerous individuals and um, Jamaican men have a lot of ten tendency to be very dangerous, especially um, the ones that I've dealt with in the past. <laughs> Let's not go through that again. <laughs> but um, outside of the relationship thing, just in terms of like culturally and like dealing with Americans, they're very pleasant. I mean, dealing with, you know, my ex-husband's family, they were generally very warm and welcoming. I mean, I lived in the house with him and, you know, I think like four of his relatives and we shared a one, one bathroom and the freaking water would go out every other day like where there would be no running water. And, um, you know, it was fine. Like we got along just fine. Um, they were very pleasant to me when I was there. I didn't know, you know, a lot of the characteristics that they, they had that, you know, was not shown to me, but you know, that type of stuff, I'm not, that's not my concern, but what I, what was shown to me, like when I would go to funerals that, um, you know, his family would have, or, you know, funerals within the neighborhood or the community, everybody was always very nice to me. So, um, you know, that's, kind of fed into me just kind of believing that I was in this kind of fantasy realm. <laughs> um, but at the end of the day, of the day, taking the element of relationship and marriage out of it, um, I think that people that live in Jamaica that, that are not Jamaicans pretty much have a, a good life. I mean, um, because people are just, you know, pretty, pretty nice. And, you know, in terms of like um, tourism and stuff like that, they say that they um target tourists um no because what i've noticed and i don't know how true this is is that it's kind of like their bread and butter the tourism industry is a huge um money maker for their economy i would almost say it's like 80 percent, but i don't i don't know i don't know the statistics but um so tourists like you walk around the street like i was in my um ex's um brother's house in the grill and we were just like chilling on the um balcony or the patio one day and I see two white people on horses fucking just trolloping by. And, you know, they're fucking um, on some exploration trip in somebody's fucking community. Like, I don't know, probably some Jamaican boy told them they can give them a tour of, you know, the exotic people of the grill or some shit. And <laughs> they just, you know, galloping around in our fucking neighborhood, like... <laughs> and nobody fucking care like that's just how it was my experience there. like somebody else could say something different that it could be 
be dangerous. But see, I'm from West Oakland and West Oakland is a very dangerous area i told you before like they found a dead body in my backyard and, and i lived in an area that was heavy drug influence and all kind of stuff so um you could be in richmond california and be in a worse situation than you would be in kingston the grip uh, kingston jamaica so um that's just something to to know New Year's Eve, they would be out, you know, we'd be out until, it's like a 24 hour celebration in the streets. It's fucking crazy. Um, if I have pictures like our, our video, I'll post it. Um, but it's just a lot of fun drinking, you know, eating, like doing whatever, like a lot of their celebrations and what I really appreciated about um, Jamaica and the culture, um, Jamaicans in general, is that they're very community focused. And they do a lot of things within the community pageants. They had like, you know, holiday pageants where women would wear, you know, gowns and, you know, model them and, you know, singing contests and things that, you know, we probably used to do back in the day before segregate desegregation. But um, yeah, so it's just, um, you know, really community focused. When you go to a certain area in Jamaica, if you're staying like in a community, best believe that everybody in that community knows that you're there, knows that you're not a part of anybody or whatever. Or if you are with somebody, they're going to know that um, you're with that person. Um, that's just how tight knit they are. Um, in our communities, we don't even fucking know our neighbors. So, um, so yeah, I mean, so there's a lot of um, really beautiful things that you can experience in Jamaica. Um, I would never deter anyone from, you know, exploring the area, living there, and even exploring a relationship if you know that it's it's genuine, you know, if it's really, really genuine. And I say that too because you can fuck with an American nigga and he'll be on some trash shit <laughs> too. So it's not to generalize against Jamaicans, but it is a very common theme that they do use foreigners f to their advantage to you know get off the island to um have green cards or whatever stuff like that um it's just unfortunate that i you know was a victim of it but you know i just live to talk about it so i just hope that you know my stories can help you or whoever else um and um and know what they're kind of getting into but you know outside of the the negative there's a lot of a lot of positives i mean people are beautiful um and so when you visit, I would recommend that you kind of explore the town more, get out and walk, you know, don't be behind the prison walls of your resort because those are really built like prisons. Um, go out and have the local food. The food usually costs like $2, $5 for a huge plate. Um, you know, people that smoke, <laughs> I'm just saying this because they don't, they don't, you guys don't know this. I like a lot of tourists don't know this because like, you'll like tell somebody to, at the at the hotel to go get you like weed or something they'll charge you like fifty dollars. That weed that they got you probably cost them like maybe five dollars. I remember probably like two two or three dollars, like maybe fifty cents. Like it's very inexpensive. <laughs> the weed like it's a very um <laughs> it's a it's a it's a game that they play with tourists to um get them to buy them drugs and stuff like that like americans or whatever get them to buy them drugs because they'll just get it for like 10 cents or 50 cents literally and mark it up to you uh for a lot of money so i don't know why i have to say that shit but it's probably because the weed is just so inexpensive like stuff you'll buy here for 20 dollars literally would be like 50 cents or like a dollar in jamaica so um yeah and then the clubs are cool um you know most places people are dancing and you know having a good time and, and really enjoying life the downside to um you know the jamaican culture just seeing you know living there and seeing what the the um, people were going through um that you know really isn't told like how um, the hotel workers don't get paid much. You know, they maybe make like $100 a week or $50 a week. Um, they usually don't make a lot of money. 
Um, and, you know, they go home, they, they have to travel in these taxis and taxis are packed. Usually, you know, they don't even have any room to breathe. You know, it's like five people in the back seat and a baby on your lap and, you know, three people in the front seat and they have to take these taxi rides, like 40, you know, minutes home, sometimes two hours home. It takes a long time for them to get home. And when they get home, you know, sometimes they don't even have running water because the government or whoever turned off the pump or the pumps, water pumps not working in their community. Like there were times when I was staying um, at my, my ex's mother's house when like for three weeks, even during Christmas and New Year's, there was no water, no running water, like none whatsoever coming out of the pipe. Meanwhile, in the Hilton, like down the street, you know, there was fucking water parks. Like, and you know, people are enjoying the water plentiful, but there are people in the community that have to walk for sometimes miles and carry carry water to, you know, take home and fill up their jugs or whatever. So those are just little things that, you know, I learned about the struggle being there compared to here is that, you know, a blessing that we have running water and Wi-Fi. You know, they don't have Wi-Fi in the mountains. And if they do, it's fucking crappy. You know, it's like, you know, stuff like that. Um, you know, if you go to Jamaica or any other foreign um, place, I would recommend you get an unlocked phone and get a SIM card so that you're able to use the um, the phone internet because you're not going to get Wi-Fi like we do. You're not going to, you know, if you, if you want to go around to, you know, restaurants and stuff like that that aren't super touristy, carry your own toilet tissue because sometimes you can't use the bathroom or, you know, they don't have toilet tissue. Um, so, yeah, I mean, that pretty much sums it up. I just wanted to share a little bit, um, you know, about my experience. And I just didn't want people to... Um, think that I view Jamaica and Jamaican people so negatively, even, you know, some of my, um, ex's relatives who were very pleasant to me and taught me a lot about, you know, being a woman, have, how to, you know, hand wash your clothes, you know, how to, you know, cook certain things. Like his, um, my ex's mother was, she taught me all that, you know, how to hand wash my clothes. And, you know, I saw through his sisters, how to be, sisterly how to be family how to you know really raise my children you know through his um through how his mother and his you know his really his mom um you know raised uh his children so the the culture in raising children um they're very good about it you know i, I think that a lot of african americans um have lost that in you know our cultural upbringing unfortunately um because we weren't raised in communities with a community mindset you know what I'm saying? Um, I don't advise as, you know, I have um, dealing with people in different cultures. Like, I don't care if you are African-American, Black, you know, Indian, whatever you call yourself, dealing with a Caucasian. That's a different culture. Dealing with an Asian, dealing with a Mexican. I don't advise dealing with other cultures because um, it's just too many cultural differences. And we as a people, we have been so pushed away are miseducated about our ethnic background that we don't even know who we are. So how are we going to deal with somebody in another culture who does or may or may not know who they are, but they have their own cultural beliefs and own, you know, their own, um, you know, upbringing and things that they're going to bring to the relationship that will definitely impact your relationship, how you raise your children, you know, how you live your life, how you sweep the floor, like general things will it, that are cultural will definitely impact your relationship. So I don't recommend it. But if you're, you know, wanting to deal with someone of another culture, if it's out of a different country, don't talk to your fucking family about it. Like, don't. You know what I'm saying? They'll sit up there and say, oh, yeah, I, um, you know, want to make sure you're okay out there. Like, why you didn't let nobody know you're going this place because we got to make sure you're okay. When I reached out to my family when I was out there, I fucking heard crickets. So, um, I can tell you horror stories of when I reached out to family members when I was in fucking Jamaica and they tell me to fucking call the embassy, the U S embassy, cause there's nothing that they could do. So when people act like they are for you and, oh, they want to, oh, where are you going? We got to know just in case something happened. No, they fucking trying to be nosy, trying to be all up in your business and trying to fucking gossip about you. That's all it is. That's it. You know, that's just how it is. But that was just a little something I just wanted to share with you guys. And I hope you enjoyed it. All right.